when hunting exceptionally dangerous monsters, Kimura's finest can never have too much firepower. Once you lay hands on the mobile fortress that is the heavy bowgun, you're only one counter away from unleashing hell. To clean up what's left, steal yourself and tackle through anything that comes your way. Just to wait. As a heavy bow gunner, it's your job to lock a monster down. So position carefully, load up your favorite ammo, and send some destruction downrange. Although you can simply fire with reckless abandon, take advantage of useful supporting ammos and other hidden strategies to help keep your fire hose of damage at its highest pressure. Welcome back, Hunters! I hope you brought enough gunpowder, because it's time for the next Monster Hunter Rise installment of... Build a Better Hunter! As with all the weapons in Monster Hunter's varied sandbox, the heavy bowgun received useful new hunting abilities and a welcome boost to mobility in Rise, mostly attributed to the handy wire bug. Sporting large magazine sizes of high-powered ammunition, the central gameplay strategy of constant and overwhelming firepower remains the focus of every heavy bowgunner. However, new methods to counter monster attacks, charge up shots of limited ammunition, and slide around the battlefield give the heavy bowgun a variety of tactics to deal with any target, no matter how tricky. Unlike Ryze's myriad of melee options, hunting monsters with ranged weapons requires more preparation before a hunt, as well as increased caution in the face of harder-hitting monster attacks. Hunters often need to bring along multiple ammo types in addition to the raw materials needed to craft more, set up custom radial menu loadouts or keybinds for on-the-fly crafting, and even eat for range-specific dongo like Temper and Marksman to realize their full potential. During a hunt, ranged weapon wielders also take more damage overall than their melee counterparts which emphasizes the importance of collecting spear birds for more health and defense, and to of course help avoid one-shot monster attacks in late high rank. Even with fully upgraded armor, there's no shame in leaving an armor charm and armor talent in your inventory, as well as downing a mega armor skin potion at the start of each hunt. You may be surprised to see just how often the difference that extra little bit of defense makes between a dangerous but survivable monster attack or a guaranteed cart. Any hunters accustomed to the 5th Fleet's iteration of the heavy bowgun will feel right at home with Kimura's oversized boomstick. Just like World and Iceborne, heavy bowguns can load Wyvern Snipe or Wyvern Heart as special ammos, but unfortunately they are weaker in practice than their New World counterparts. Both recharge slower than their previous version too, and the same unskippable vulnerability animations after firing and unloading the ammo feel painfully long, especially in Rise when faced against the faster monsters in high rank. The most effective time to use either special ammo is during an extended down such as a knockout or damage topple. Though it can be fun to channel your inner Rambo while a monster is still up and at it. A slightly weaker version of both special ammos exists as a switch skill if you would prefer to use the attack to also heal yourself, but it's faster and safer to just sheath and drink a potion instead. 
In a stroke of genius, Capcom gave heavy bow gunners the same damage mitigating and roar negating tackle enjoyed by the Great Sword. This switch skill swaps with the standard melee, but for all intents and purposes, the tackle is a straight upgrade over the melee it replaces. Use this shoulder check often to ignore roars, power through undodgeable attacks, and to quickly build up stun in a pinch if you didn't bring sticky ammo. Although tackles reduce immediate damage taken, you still receive more damage overall as a ranged hunter, and are also vulnerable to stun if you tackle too many attacks. So keep an eye on your health, and don't get cocky. While the standard evasion for the heavy bow gun, commonly referred to as the fat roll, is still the longest evade roll in the game, especially with evade extender level 3, there are two additional movement options to more precisely position mid-hunt. Borrowed from the light bow gun, the heavy bow gun can now side hop immediately after certain actions like firing or loading special ammos. This evasion covers much less distance, but is lightning fast compared to the standard roll. and can chain into multiple side hops as long as you have stamina. To cover even more distance than a regular evade, the free silkbind glide maneuver requires one wire bug and can be cancelled early with a tackle or sheath. This sheath animation is a little faster than a standard sheath as well, so use it often when you need to get out of harm's way to heal. Rise also introduced the ability to charge up shots on the heavy bowgun. For ammos that support it, this mechanic allows for ammo conservation with higher damage per shot at the cost of overall damage per second. Without getting much into the math of it all, most ammos do not benefit from charged shots since simply firing twice is usually faster and still does more combined damage than a fully charged shot can. However, for builds that center around the wyvern, Piercing Dragon, and Slicing Ammos, the need to conserve ammo and avoid restocks mid-hunt make charging necessary in these niche cases. Otherwise, charged shots are still useful during those small moments of downtime when a monster flinches, or when you need a moment or two to get your aim right on target. The Heavy Bowgun's Defining Silk Bind sends out Iron Silk Trip Lines that can activate two counters of your choice after a monster attack or roar. Each with their specific uses. The counter shot costs two wire bugs and allows your hunter to fire a single high power shot as soon as the tip of the heavy bowgun glows, dealing the same damage no matter how long it is charged. This attack is perfect for building up wyvern rides quickly. And the backflip inducing recoil also serves as a pseudo dodge if used carefully. On the other end, the counter charger option costs only one wire bug and gives around a 40 second lingering buff that drastically decreases charge times. This counter has a much shorter animation, serving double duty as a sort of panic evade if you can't survive another tackle. But the buff itself goes away if you sheath your heavy bowgun, are attacked by the monster, or get flinched in any way. Both Silk Binds do not protect against attacks with multiple hitboxes, so choose your counter opportunities carefully. Although a charged Wyvern ammo shot is often the most powerful wake-up attack for the Heavy Bowgun, counter shots are a close second and the only option for weapons that cannot shoot Wyvern ammo. 
You can trigger a counter shot wake up yourself by setting down a small barrel bomb. Or simply enlist the help of a friend to throw one your way. When it comes to preparing builds for the heavy bow gun, there are so many factors to take into consideration that it can be hard to wrap your head around the process if all you've known are melee weapons. I'll do my best to distill down the methodology and what to look for if you want to theorycraft your next set, but remember to take your time when stepping foot into the complex world of ranged hunting. Despite many heavy bow guns sporting the ability to shoot multiple different ammo types, most of them are only proficient at firing one or two of these ammos. These are typically high power level 3 ammos with large capacities that allow for constant firing with little downtime for reloading. Recoil severity and reload speed also affect each ammo type of any given bowgun differently. Both of these can be mitigated to a certain extent with the absorber and quick load decorations. In general, the fast or fastest reload speed ratings are preferred, while a low recoil rating enables a faster firing rate and is necessary for the vast majority of builds. Apart from wyvern, spread, and shrapnel ammo, zero deviation is also the goal with the help of sniper decorations, as it affects an ammo's trajectory and rise instead of reticle bloom like it does in World and Iceborne. Once you've settled on a bowgun, boost the power of specific shot types with normal up, spread up, and pierce up decorations corresponding to their raw ammos, or use the artillery decorations to boost the power of sticky and wyvern ammo. After this, you're free to start going after the typical damage and affinity skills for raw ammos. Just remember that explosive ammos only need attack boosting skills since they cannot crit. Depending on ammo type, spare shot is also a necessary decoration for ammo conservation or even for an effectively extended magazine, while other subjectively useful skills like ballistics, evade extender, or a level of flinch free can fill in any remaining slots. In case it wasn't obvious already, building range sets is extremely reliant on multiple skills and decorations, so sacrifices may often have to be made in levels of attack or affinity. This unfortunately means that talismans pull more weight here than on melee sets, so even though a good talisman still isn't required for a set to function, a build shines brighter the better your talisman is. As I mentioned in my last video, there are easy methods to skip Capcom's awful RNG system for obtaining great talismans on both Switch and PC. And while I don't officially condone the processes, they do a great job in allowing hunters to focus more on the hunt and less on the anti-fun grind that is talisman melding. If you're interested in learning more, simply check out my Discord server in the description below. This build guide is for the base game of Monster Hunter Rise. And despite Sunbreak's launch soon, I wanted to release this video for those who may not want to immediately jump into the new adventure awaiting at the Elgato Outpost. There are many changes coming to the much anticipated Master Rank expansion, and it remains to be seen if they are all positive and worth the initial price of admission. Rest assured that this video, as well as my previous two in the series, will still get a Master Rank follow-up in time that updates the builds accordingly and discusses all the new hunting capabilities at our disposal. With that, the sets you see here all feature two versions, one with a relatively common talisman obtainable through melding, and another fully optimized build with a theoretical maximum charm. Many sets here can also take advantage of the Dragonheart ability from Crimson Glow Valstrax's armor, so check timestamps in the description to find your favorite build at any time. Dango meals before each hunt can vary depending on your preferred ammo type and playstyle, but in general, Temper and Marksman raise the strength of shot type ammos and wyvern ammo, and Bombardier increases the damage of both sticky and wyvern ammo shots too. Booster is always a solid pick for the free 10 minute damage and defense buff, but other Dango like Slugger for extra stun buildup, Moxie to help survive an otherwise deadly attack, and Specialist for extra status buildup are also useful depending on what your build is going for. Dango Weakener is also always recommended if you are the quest poster for a chance at a monster with less total health. Sadly, there will be no shielded heavy bowgun builds in this video, because unlike World and Iceborne, shield mods cannot be stacked, and the skill investment for guard and guard up skills takes up far too many decoration slots to still build for enough damage. Instead, the only heavy bowgun mod you should be using in the base game is Power Barrel for a healthy increase in raw damage output. Finally, most of the sets in this guide that rely on affinity and critical hits take advantage of a fight palico's free affinity and damage buffs from Rousing Roar and Power Drum respectively to help take the load off of needing so many critical eye and attack boost decorations. On the flip side, there are a few builds here where extra affinity isn't necessary, so for those of you that stick with your faithful canine companions, you're in luck. 
The introduction of wirebugs in Monster Hunter Rise brought the end of clutch claw tenderizing that hunters in Iceborne became accustomed to. This had an unfortunate and unintentional side effect of severely gutting the once powerful shot type ammos of Spread and Pierce. Many monsters in late high rank have awful shot hit zones that do not allow the weakness exploit skill to activate, so it's no surprise that sticky ammo builds quickly became the meta. Flat damage regardless of hit zone, decent stun buildup, and no need to build for affinity allows high raw options like Rajang's Rage and the Rampage Heavy Bowgun to shine. Both are great bowguns, but I personally prefer the latter for its flexibility. Once you apply all the correct ramp-ups, the Rampage Heavy Bowgun can take on pretty much every monster in the game, and can do so often without restocking. The basic gameplay loop of stickies revolves around landing enough level 3 sticky ammo on a monster's head for a knockout, then simply unloading as much cluster ammo as you have time for. You can choose any status ramp up you like as well, whether you prefer the paralysis effect to lock a monster in place, sleep effect to catch a breather and safely craft ammo and reload, or even the poison effect ramp up for access to more damage over time and other ammos to buff those in your hunting party. Better talismans give more slots to stack attack boost and more levels of agitator or peak performance. If you aren't confident enough with cluster ammo to avoid launching fellow hunters, consider building Rajang's Rage as it has access to wyvern ammo instead, but you can only shoot paralysis analysis ammo for your status. Even though it also has slightly better reload stats on sticky ammo than the Rampage Heavy Bowgun, you are stuck in place while firing. At the cost of a small amount of damage potential, try setting up the Rampage Heavy Bowgun to pursue even more knockouts and buffs for your party. By dropping Agitator entirely, there's now room to run Slugger maxed out. Over the course of a solo hunt, a couple additional knockouts are possible but you're likely to see only one extra topple in a 4-player hunt. Any sticky ammo that does not land on the head will still deal extra exhaust damage with a Stamina Thief skill, and you can accelerate the activation of this useful status with exhaust ammo of your own. This build works best when helping out in difficult hunts due to ample level 2 recovery ammo, where only two shots or a single charge shot will almost completely heal any hunter. Although these healing shots have a wide radius of effect, they travel slowly, so you may need to lead your target. Grab more levels of attack boost and stamina thief as better talismans come your way. And remember to watch your cluster placement while in multiplayer to avoid launching fellow hunters. Sticky ammo remains the munition of choice for a set focused on comfort, and the Rampage Heavy Bowgun is still a solid pick. Earplugs are not needed in this set thanks to the new tackle ability, which frees up space to still have full artillery and some levels of attack boost. Full stun resistance and Divine Blessing lets you also worry less about getting stunned through a tackle and the damage left over from it. Rounding it off, Maximum Evade Extender gives evasion rolls an almost comically large length of travel, making it easy to outspace almost any attack. Better Talismans will give you enough room to add a level of flinch free or more attack boost decorations. So until then, monsters with larger health pools may force a mid-hunt restock. All three of these sticky ammo sets run effectively with either a Fight Palico or Palamute, so take your pick of Buddy to bring along. All those sticky ammo sets are generally the preferred choice for the majority of monsters in Rise. Shot type ammos still hold their own against the right targets, and in some ways are actually easier to hunt with since they feature larger magazine sizes, do not rely on constant ammo crafting, and hunters rarely, if ever, have to farcaster back to camp to restock. For those wanting the simplest point-and-shoot heavy bowgun experience, normal ammo is a great place to start, and the Despot's Paroxysm from Zenogar checks all the right boxes. Normal ammo has a decent working range already, but with full ballistics, the minimum critical range is shortened, and the maximum critical range is extended, allowing for full damage both closer and farther from your target. 100% affinity is guaranteed on weak spots when Rousing Roar is active, and Wyvern ammo can serve as a backup in a pinch.
Normal ammo becomes quite powerful once paired with full Crimson Glow Valstrax armor, however. You do have to give up Ballistics, but the trade-off in damage from Dragonheart paired with Resuscitate gets stronger and stronger as you meld better talismans to stack even more attack boost. The anti-aquatic species ramp up is stronger on water dwelling monsters than the standard attack boost ramp up, but I recommend just staying with the attack boost option for the widest use. The Dora Grande from Kushala Dora is another good pick for normals for easy affinity stacking, but with that heavy bowgun you lose a shot of normal 3 per magazine and are stuck with stationary fire. While it has lost its former glory from Iceborne, Spread Ammo still packs a punch in Rise, and the Tigrex Skull from the Primordial Pseudo Wyvern is a solid pick. Once the negative base affinity is corrected, the 5 shots of level 3 spread ammo per magazine often turn into 6 or more with spare shots. Depending on preference, you can sub out Spare Shot for more levels of attack boost, or even Ballistics for further reaching blasts. Wyvern Ammo again acts as a backup and hits especially hard for wake-ups and kill shots. A Dragonheart approach works well for Spread in particular, since you will often activate Resentment when in such close proximity to monster attacks. As better Talismans come your way, sub out Maximum Might for Critical Eye for more reliable affinity, and work in levels of Critical Boost to bully monsters to your heart's content. This set matches up well against all targets with a squishy face, most notably the Wraths and Zenogre. As a happy coincidence, both versions of this build also pull double duty as the best shrapnel ammo options for Rampages and certain multi-monster quests in the arena, since shrapnel ammo is positively affected by the spread up skill. Just don't even think about using shrapnel ammo for normal quests, as the damage output on single targets is abysmal. Pierce ammo finishes up the shot type builds in this guide, and for the few long monsters that sport good hit zones, consider a weakness exploit playstyle with Barrios Thorn Cannon. This heavy bowgun is low on variety, but high on pierce shot spam with 6 shots of level 3 pierce ammo in its magazine. Ballistics level 3 also helps to maximize your critical distance range, which is mostly needed for pierce when monsters get too close, and the optional spare shot skill effectively increases your firing potential. Unfortunately, the Thorn Cannon cannot fire any kind of sticky ammo, so it's up to your tackles and wyvern snipes to get a KO or two during a hunt. When paired with Valstrax's armor, Dragonheart again gives a much welcome boost to damage, though as with normal ammo, you do have to give up Ballistics. Prioritize more levels of attack boost with better talismans on both builds for more percentage-based damage multipliers. Either of these sets match up well with the Wind and Thunder Serpents, as well as Mizutsune and Anjanath. The Tigrex Skull is also a competitive option for Pierce due to its access to stickies, but you give up a round of Pierce in your magazine and have to forego Spare Shot for Ballistics. Unfortunately, most long monsters in Rise do not feature good shot hit zones, so Pierce builds without the boost of Weakness Exploit need to get their affinity elsewhere. The Dora Grande from the Windy Metal Elder Dragon is capable of this thanks to the unique Kushala Dora Soul Ramp Up. Essentially the Chain Crit skill last seen in Monster Hunter Generations, this gives a 25-30% to 30 affinity boost as long as you are constantly attacking. Paired with enough affinity skills and a Fight Palico's Rousing Roar, it is still common to see 100% affinity while on a hunt. The Dora Grande has a bit more utility than the Thorn Cannon, with access to status ammos like Paralysis for more chances at lockdown damage, so take advantage of its secondary options. With better talismans, prioritize the critical boost and attack boost skills. This build's Dragonheart variant again gives up Ballistics, as well as status ammo functionality and a small amount of affinity, but it still outdamages the standard set due to Resuscitate's near-constant uptime. 
as one of the few bow guns in this guide stuck with stationary fire, positioning is very important for optimal damage. Use your wire slide and tackles often for maneuvering and damage mitigation, and work in critical boost skills and a level of flinch free as you get better talismans. Try these sets out on Basilgus, Kushaladora, and even Magnamalo for a fun matchup. As another consequence realized from nerfing raw ammo builds, elemental bow gunning is now surprisingly powerful in Monster Hunter Rise against the right targets. This is mostly due to the way in which damage from elemental shots is calculated, where each round averages about 80% elemental damage and only 20% physical damage. In effect, this means shot type hit zones have little weight towards damage output, leading elemental bow gunners to instead target good elemental hit zones more often, and it also reduces the necessity of Dango Temper, since the buff only affects the physical portion portion of each shot. For the heavy bow gun in particular, piercing elemental shots are the focus of all elemental builds thanks to their damage potential on larger monsters. Starting out with Rise's only Tim Nocerin, Rachna Kadaki gives hunters the best piercing fire heavy bowgun with her Arachna Mortar. With a high 40% base affinity, this bowgun can easily build around critical element with the help of critical eye skills and rousing roar. Piercing fire ammo is your bread and butter for this set, with fire damage boosted even further with a couple levels of Teostra Blessing, making Camellios, Amudron, and even Ibushi susceptible targets. This heavy bowgun also cannot fire sticky ammo, so aim carefully with your wyvern snipes instead. Better talismans allow for higher levels of attack boost and critical eye, two levels of ammo up for an additional shot of piercing fire ammo in your magazine, or even a level of steadiness to be able to eat for dango temper. Mizutsune's weapon designs are always fun to hunt with, and his mountainous roar styled after a Shinto shrine is also a competitive piercing water bowgun. This set still takes advantage of a critical element playstyle, though it isn't quite as powerful as it could be due to a relatively small piercing water magazine size and only 10% base affinity, but spare shot still helps out to keep the ammo flowing. Thankfully this bowgun doesn't need many reload or recoil decorations, giving additional space for the more important critical eye and attack boost skills, and a level of steadiness or flinch free with a slightly better talisman. Anjanath, Toby Kadachi, and Magnamalo are all great targets for this set. So start off each hunt with a few sticky ammo shots for a quick KO, ripe for water damage. Thunder Serpent Narwa provides a great piercing thunder bowgun with her Abyssal Storm Barrage. Low base affinity largely prevents this heavy bowgun from pursuing critical element even with a fight palico, so bring your palamute along if desired. Keep a monster angry as long as possible to maintain the agitator skill by using paralysis ammo or traps if the status threshold increases too much. For the ramp up, stick with anti-aerial species to take on Nargakuga, Tigrex, and Kushaladora. and swap for the attack boost ramp up for Mizutsune and Somnicamp. Remember to throw on more levels of attack boost and agitator when stronger talismans allow. Baryoth isn't content with just regular pierce ammo, because his thorn cannon also shreds with piercing ice. A decent 20% base affinity lets this heavy bowgun again rely on critical element for the most elemental damage possible, making it the bane of every Diablos out there. Access to sleep ammo gives a couple opportunities for wyvern snipe wakeups during a hunt, which can also chain into a KO for an even larger damage window. Narwa and Rachna Kadaki are also good targets to try this set out on. Just don't forget spare snow herbs to craft more ammo as needed.
While Crimson Glow Valstrax is known more for his Dragonheart ability for raw damage sets, his Diabolica can also hold its own for Piercing Dragon. Just like Narwa's Heavy Bowgun, this build does not run Critical Element, so stack as much attack boost as you can after maxing out Dragon Attack and consider taking your Palamute along for hunts. Due to extremely limited ammo and crafting reserves, it is necessary to charge all Dragon Shots, so keep Counter Charger active as much as possible for fast charging assisted by maximum focus. Even with great spare shot luck, you still cannot carry enough Dragonfell Berries to complete a normal hunt with piercing dragon ammo alone, so fall back on Wyvern ammo as a powerful secondary and Wyvern Heart when you have a good opening. This build is essentially an anti-wrath set only. Because even though Ibushi is very weak to Dragon, his high health pool will almost always require a restock or two to hunt. There is actually a simple piercing elemental option I recommend for those who want an all-in-one weapon. The Rampage Heavy Bowgun, in spite of its negative 30% affinity after attack boosting ramp ups, can also effectively shoot all elemental piercing ammos since negative affinity only affects the physical portion of an elemental shot. This bowgun's access to the same sticky ammo stats as the primary meta build make the two-stage hunting cycle pretty reliable. Simply spam stickies for a KO, then unload with the piercing elemental ammo of choice. Level 3 cluster ammo is often needed as a secondary if you run out of piercing elemental shots. Especially for piercing dragon, though you can have some fun by shooting your clusters in a level trajectory as long as you're hopping off of a ledge or cliff. You will need to craft 5 of these heavy bowguns in total if you do not wish to constantly swap out elemental attack decorations and the matching elemental ramp up, but making the rampage variants may be preferred to climbing the weapon trees for each of the unique elemental heavy bowguns. Better talismans will allow higher levels of attack boost and maximum might to stabilize your affinity if desired. Though you may also want to sub out one of those decorations for Slugger to get knockouts a bit faster. Thanks to the large variety of ammos to mess around with in Monster Hunter Rise, there are multiple off-meta sets that explore more unorthodox but highly enjoyable hunting methods. If you ever wanted to try out Sleep Bombardment, Charged Slicing Spam, Grounded Level Shot Clusters, Spread with all statuses, or even a set to wyvern ammo your way through an entire hunt, you've come to the right part of this video. While you won't win any speedrun records with these sets, they definitely turn the fun factor up a notch. Even though it dropped from the go-to sticky meta early on in Rise's life cycle, the Ore Tree's Meteor Cannon still has a few tricks up its sleeve when focused on explosives. Mega Barrel Bombs already do respectable damage on their own, but when paired with the Bombardier skill and ample access to sleep ammo, the old world cheese strategy of sleep bombing is suddenly viable again. This set shines the most in multiplayer hunts with everyone running the same build and Palamutes also wielding a sleep weapon, so coordinate as much as possible and bring along plenty of materials for more explosions.
Stationary stickies and single shot paralysis ammo is mostly used here for stun buildup and movement prevention. As the main goal is to continuously sleep a monster, set up tons of mega barrel bombs, and synchronize some charged wyvern ammo shots. Keep countercharger up when possible to charge all status shots for ammo conservation. Eat for Dango Pyro to automatically make all large barrel bombs in your inventory place as mega barrel bombs, and swap out a level of bombardier if you absolutely need flinch free. Charged wyvern shots can be held indefinitely, so there's no rush in setting up each wake up. Unless everyone just wants to throw down another mid-air barrel at once instead. Nargakuga secures a place in this guide with his Baleful Knight, a heavy bowgun with balanced stats to pursue a slicing ammo set. Although slicing ammo is plagued by a low ammo count and relatively small crafting reserves, its fast traveling shots deal delayed severing damage that make for quick tail cuts and decent damage output on otherwise disappointing shot hit zones. To avoid restocks, this build prioritizes focus and countercharger, so keep your distance if possible. And also take advantage of Wyvern Snipes. The Dragonheart version of this set adds a little more damage overall, making it easier to go an entire hunt without running out of ammo. Though better talismans will enable full focus, more attack boost, and a level of flinch free. You and your friends may have a harder time staying alive while in Dragonheart's threshold, making the return to camp somewhat inevitable. If you don't mind restocking at least once each hunt, feel free to drop the focus skill for attack boost and just spam slashing shots at will. But good luck seeing what's going on through all those crits. Level shot clusters aren't only resigned to an aerial approach, as some options like the feline cannon can fire them while walking on the ground. In what can be best described as a meme build on a power trip, this bowgun is arguably capable of the highest damage per second in Rise, destroying huge chunks of monster health in mere moments. Especially when spare shot goes nuts. The only stickler that holds this set back from being legitimately viable for normal hunts is the same scarce ammo and crafting reserves shared with dragon ammo. Assuming spare shot activates as much as it should and after crafting properly, you can only expect 20 shots of level 3 cluster ammo plus a few leftover rounds of level 2 clusters before needing to farcaster and restock. Depending on a monster's health pool, this can mean restocking two or more times per quest, quickly depleting bombberry reserves on each hunt. Level shot clusters also prevent hunters from aiming at monster parts unobstructed by other hunters, so I don't recommend taking this build into multiplayer lobbies unless everyone else is aware of your imminent launching shenanigans. The Dragonheart version of this build is slightly more powerful and may actually be easier to hunt with since peak performance on the standard build is difficult to maintain. Wyvern snipes on both sets may provide a knockout or two, while Wyvern ammo can work as a backup if you sub in levels of artillery as needed. Once you run out of clusters though, it's honestly better to just go get more and keep up the explosive spam.
An alternate spread build with a penchant for status brings us to the Veiled Chameleon from the Trickster Elder Dragon Chameleos. Still capable of damage almost on par with the Tigrex spread build, this set can utilize all status ammos in the game for complete and total monster control in a hunt. In effect, coordinated hunters are able to easily script out enormous damage sequences with a monster that is either stuck in a trap of some kind, knocked out, or waiting to be awoken with a counter shot. After each initial status activation, attempt the second with charge shots to save ammo. But after that, stick to spread ammo instead of wasting time chasing that third activation, especially in multiplayer. Keep an eye on your health with this build, because when Dragonheart activates at 50% health, it will prevent any more status from accruing until you heal. This set gives solo and multiplayer hunters alike plenty of chances to practice counter shot wake ups. And in multiplayer, you can synchronize the wake up by simply letting the counter shot auto fire after its purely aesthetic charging animation. Would you believe me if I told you many hunts could be completed with Wyvern ammo and only Wyvern ammo? It's a reality with Diablos' Diablo Zuka capable of reaching the highest raw attack value in Rise. By abandoning all affinity skills and instead stacking toward raw boosting skills, artillery, and the attack boost ramp up from the bone tree, each fully charged shot of wyvern ammo can hit for well over 1000 damage combined from the initial and residual blast. This much burst damage at once means most shots will cause a flinch, often giving you the power to stop monsters in their tracks even in midair. While you can only expect 12 or 13 blasts if Spare Shot activates as expected, this can still be enough to complete entire hunts if your aim is spot on. The Diversion skill helps hold on to a monster's aggro, so if you charge a Wyvern Shot at the wrong time, just hold the shot until the monster targets you again. Focus and Counter Charger combine to get your Wyvern Shots fully charged quickly, so keep a wire bug handy. Multiple Wyvern Snipes can also supplement your damage if needed with a special ammo boost skill. But the more hunters that join you in your impenetrable wall of damage, the better. That about wraps up my third and final Build a Better Hunter for the base game of Monster Hunter Rise. Even without the new skills and abilities awaiting us in Sunbreak, Kimura's realized vision of the heavy bowgun provides a refreshing hunting experience still filled with a focused and sustained onslaught of damage. The added opportunities for acrobatics and finesse with an otherwise lumbering tank of a weapon make it a treat to hunt with. Big thanks to Livy for the support in recording this video. Logan and Noah for putting up with my hunting shenanigans. Prof and Cat for helping to optimize the builds. and all of you viewers for sticking with me throughout this exploration of heavy bow gunning.
I am incredibly thankful for the extra 1,500 subscribers that decided to join our growing Wiggler gang since my last video. So until next time, happy hunting! <laughs>